Hello everyone, and welcome to my career mode let's play slash tutorial in Kerbal Space Program 1.4.1 and in this episode I hope to reach Minmus and get a lot of science for that. We've been pretty sparing about the science we've collected so far because I didn't want to get too far ahead in the tech tree and also I haven't upgraded the launch pad. I've limited myself to 18 tons without getting the launch pad upgrade and to a large extent that is because I wanted to show what's possible with these smaller craft and really limitation is what breeds efficiency and so I wanted to focus on efficient craft first and so that you know because once we get all the other parts it's going to be tempting to make things big and you can of, co of course but uh, first it's a uh, good to master being able to make things small and to that extent going to Minmus we are going to want to use the Poverdobodine Octo which is our little probe core, 0.1 tons, instead of sending the Mark 1 command pod, which is 0.84 tons. After all, in order to make an efficient rocket that has a lot of delta V and can go a lot of places, uh, you don't have too many options. Uh, option number one is a better ISP of the engines, but really, we don't have a huge range, right? This is 320, this is 345, so you get a 10% bonus for using this one over that one in terms of just ISP. Uh, the other option is to reduce structural mass. Remember our rule was twice the fuel mass uh, than the structural mass in each stage. Well, if your structural mass is really low, then your fuel mass is going to be really low too. And from that fuel mass, you're going to get 10 times the engine ISP roughly, which is 3,450 for the Terrier. And so another benefit of the Terrier, of course, was that it's only 0.5 tons compared to 1.5 tons for the swivel. And that is another big issue. It's the reduced structural mass, which uh, saves all the stages of the rocket, not just the one you're working on, because the next stage is lighter and the next stage is lighter. So, and of course, actually, we would very much like a smaller engine than this. The smaller engine, the better. Uh, you might think that you just want to get to the bigger engines. Actually, what you really want are the smaller engines. This is already too big, and let me demonstrate. Another thing I want to talk about in this episode is MechJeb. And so MechJeb, uh, if you use my add KOS uh, configuration uh, that I posted on a previous video, uh, you can dump the MechJeb parts because they don't want modded parts. And so MechJeb pops up by default when you have a command module in your part. So this has a little command module. And that's why MechJeb pops up here. And you can see MechJeb has Delta V stats. Now, what's the benefit of MechJeb over uh, Kerbal Engineer? Kerbal Engineer is trimmer. It's basically more focused. MechJeb is like many, many mods combined into one. So rather than getting all those mods like Precise Node, Transfer Window Planner, and stuff like that, MechJeb makes it simpler. Also, if you've been controlling your craft with keyboard instead of a joystick, I've been using a joystick, so I've been reasonably okay about controlling my craft. Uh, but with the keyboard, it might be a little bit cumbersome to actually turn your rocket effectively and smoothly. And I'll show you how MechJeb can help with that if you've been having problems with that. Uh, for now, uh, at least it gives us the Delta V stats like, uh, like Kerbal Engineer does. And here's the atmospheric Delta V and the vacuum Delta V based on the uh, engine, atmospheric ISP and vacuum ISP, so we have those stats. This is sea level thrust, uh, thrust weight ratio, and the thrust weight ratio in vacuum. Sea level thrust weight ratio is uh, the one on the ground, so that determines whether you can get off the ground or not. So that's the important one. That's, one, that's the one that we need to make sure is above one on the first stage. And this is the stage time. Uh, so uh, with Kerbal Engineer, one annoyance was that you have to click atmosphere every time you want to get the stats on the ground and then switch back to the vacuum. I don't know if it let you uh, maybe see everything at once uh, with some sort of option, but uh, this just gives it to you here and you've got the option of uh, short stats, long stats, this includes the mass and the maximum thrust to weight ratios, and then a uh, custom thing which I never use. Uh, so. Let's just go for this long stats, which I usually go for. Okay, so now I mentioned that the Terrier was too big. Well, this is why. Well, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's huge compared to this probe core. Now, of course, we're going to have to have some fuel here, but still. 
it is uh, it is a large thing. And here we can see delta v. Now you don't have to like measure okay the uh, try and figure out the dry mass and the uh, fuel mass. All you really want from the delta v is that it's ten times. Uh, whoop, that number there. So we're looking for 3450 from that for this stage. And we need some science though. And so let's take a look at our science. Uh, I think uh, we want four mystery goos and I'm gonna place them like this. Uh, clipping them in a little bit. And also I want thermometer. And I want barometer. I don't want to carry the science junior and that's because you can see our total mass right now is 1.3 uh, 1.935 tons the science junior alone is 0.2 tons so it'll be a significant additional mass to this whole thing and it can only be done once in one biome and we want to land in multiple biomes on Minmus to get the maximum benefit that means get having a lot of delta V so that is the plan now the problem with this little setup here is well we could use some more electric charge that's good. Uh, in fact, probably more than this. 200 might work. We do need some solar panel reef for power. We have a few options. And of course, we want to keep the dry mass of this light. You could use the service bay, but it's an extra cost and extra mass, so I don't. Um, to make things aerodynamic, we could go like this. And this actually isn't too heavy, it's 0.03 tons. I get the strange feeling this is not going to be considered particularly aerodynamic by by the game. It, it really isn't. Um, is it worse than the onion reentry pod? I don't know. I think it would be better for us to just go with the nose cone. We need communications, because there's no guarantee we're bringing this back. Uh, pro probably we're not bringing this back. Okay, obviously we don't have enough delta V in this stage. And unfortunately we don't have nicer fuel tanks. This fuel tank adapter is new. And it's not what I need right now. When it comes to the landing struts, I don't know if we want the landing struts or not. We could land directly on the engine. Minmus is forgiving as far as that sort of thing is concerned. So you could have the landing struts, but they also take a chunk out of your delta V. It's good at this point to think about our requirements for Minmus. We need at least 900 to get there and no less, uh, no more than 1,000. So we'll say 1,000. 1,000 will t definitely get us from Kerbin orbit to Minmus. And then landing on Minmus, well, first making orbit around Minmus, let's say 300 there. That's more than enough. And then landing on Minmus, let's say 300. And so altogether that's 1,500. And then if we want to hop to another biome, we need another... 200 or so. Um, so 1,500 plus 200 per additional biome. Well, we certainly have that here. We could transfer to Minmus, make orbit, land, and do all the things without an additional tank. So it's reasonable to just keep this as is. And certainly the thrust weight ratio is overblown. Minmus has a surface gravity of 1 20th that of Kerbin. And now you can switch to Minmus here. And uh, see that our thrust weight ratio on Minmus surface is 59. Um, we do not need this. That's a lot of thrust to weight ratio. So this is a good time to just thrust limit this. So we don't have to deal with too much thrust. Of course we can throttle, but uh, the throttle range is such that it's uh, tough to deal with 59 times the surface gravity of a body. So maybe we'll use landing struts simply because well, we have the delta V for it. When selecting the engine for the next stage, or thinking about what the next stage might look like, we can start by using the dry mass, uh, this total mass with the fuel as the dry mass. So, two tons. So, if we have twice that amount of fuel, that's four tons. So, we're talking about a six ton stage minimum. So, what's our minimum engine? Well, a minimum engine is one that has six tons of thrust and the terrier has six tons of thrust so we can have another stage with the terrier it won't have a thrust weight ratio of one because we're going to end up with a structural mass of more than two tons but that's all right because it's not trying to get us off the ground now that's two tons 
and we will want to switch back to Kerbin for this. Um, well, here is time for another technique to limit... I mean, I don't know how aerodynamically happy this is going to be, but what you do is you put the... nope. There we go. Put them on their side, make sure they're snapped, and suddenly you've got extra fuel without making your rocket any taller. I mean, if you if you don't want to clip them, you can pull them out, but there's no particular point. The aerodynamics of this, I haven't actually tested. It might cause a lot of drag. But right now, our thrust weight ratio on this stage is 0.86 in vacuum, and uh, so that's not horrible. That's reasonable. And I'm just going to leave it as is. You could put another one of these tanks if you like and make it taller, but I've never shied away from this particular configuration used to be that you had to put fuel lines to get the fuel to flow into the center tank so that it feeds the terrier, but now you don't. Um, and of course we haven't unlocked fuel lines yet, so it wouldn't be, have been possible to make this in earlier versions. Well, 1.3 it would have been able to, uh, you would have been able to, but previous to that you wouldn't. Ah, we have a part count problem though. Well that's a good reason to not have... maybe maybe you can get by with just three landing struts which would be lighter anyway and how about three solar panels we could get by with no landing struts too but now this this tank configuration even though it's nifty and saves us from being too tall obviously has caused a problem okay so this barely has the ability to get off the ground but if we combine these two stages to vacuum delta v is 4300 but it's a toss-up whether it's enough right now, because the atmospheric delta V isn't all that great. I think to be safer, and because we're using the swivel instead of the Reliant, uh, maybe I'll just cut down on the size of this stage. So none of our stages is particularly the most efficient it could be, but that's down to the thrust of the engines being what they are. And it's worthwhile to speak briefly. Let me use SAS to stabilize. Uh, we don't need Kerbal on Clock right now. Uh, speak briefly on how to customize your windows for MechJeb. So there's this, there's all these functions, and it can be quite overwhelming. But the one I'm interested in right now is this custom window editor because you can see it doesn't automatically put up the little windows that we're used to for Kerbal Engineer, and. Uh, we can pick a bunch of stuff. There's this orbital info one that's already configured, but it's got too much stuff there. I, I, I don't need the angle to prograde, so I'll remove that. Eccentricity, I don't really need it. Remove. My current inclination is of some interest. Um, time to periapsis. I can figure that out from the orbital period and time to apoapsis. Time to apoapsis is the important thing for launch, and that's what you want to get close to zero by the time you reach apoapsis so that you can just burn that apoapsis to finish the orbit. So let's do that. We don't want time to apoaps apoapsis to get too high because then we're going to end up with a lopsided orbit. Apoapsis, periapsis. And orbital speed I don't need because I can see it down here. So let's get rid of that as well. Okay. And there are different styles. If you want it like that, if you want... Um, you can change the background color, make it compact. I think we'll go with compact. The overlay is good, but uh, here the Kerbal Engineer overlay version is nice because... Um, oh wait, I think we can change the transparent. Ah, there we go. So this is the transparency one, and so we can make it transparent if you like. Um, I would like some background so that when we're over clouds, the white text can still be seen. Of course, white text is good in space because it's black. So, um, yeah, so I think this is good. And then we can also have surface info, which is for landing. Uh, right now, that's not important. But actually, let me move this one down here. Hopefully, it's not too hard to read for you guys. But I can read it, and I'm going to be controlling the vessel. Uh, surface info is the next one. And... This is the altitude above sea level, which we already have up there, so we don't need that. That's duplicating. But the true altitude is the radar altitude above ground, so we need that in order to land. Pitch, heading, roll, I see on my nav ball. 
surface speed and vertical speed. Uh, surface speed I can see here, so I don't need that. Vertical speed and horizontal speed are the two that I want. And so that'll tell me how quickly I'm dropping versus how quickly I'm going horizontally above the ground. Uh, coordinates I don't necessarily want. Uh, what would be nice is the surface biome, which we had in in Kerbal Engineer, right? Surface biome. Finally, vessel info is another window, but this doesn't mean that you are limited to these three. You can create a new one, and it'll be at an additional option over here once you do. Um, vessel info, I don't need the maximum acceleration. I don't need the current acceleration. I don't need the maximum thrust. Vessel mass might be interesting. Uh, surface thrust weight ratio, I should have gotten that right before I took it out to the launch pad. And so what I want from this is actually my delta V's. I want the total delta V, total delta V atmosphere comma vacuum, so that's the atmosphere one, that's the vacuum one. I want my surface delta V, uh, stage delta V, that's just for this stage, which currently there is no stage active right now. Okay, one other one that might be of interest for for you guys is rendezvous and let's make a new window for that rendezvous and so let's see what would I want for rendezvous well I want the information of the target I want the targets relative inclination I want the targets um, I want my relative velocity to the target I want the closest approach distance to the target and the current distance to the target and the time to the closest approach. Right now our target is Minmus and this is more important for docking and like the stuff I showed in the previous episode. So this would have been a lot of help for saving Valentina. I usually put this up here and obviously time to closest approach is nonsense because we haven't got, we will never approach Minmus. It's infinite. Uh, once again we pick overlay and the background lighter. Okay, well at long last it is time to go. So throttle up, SAS on. There are other things that MechJeb offers, but we'll get to that later. And ignition. Actually, let's get to one of them, Smart ASS. Smart ASS is the way to control your craft if you are using keyboard and you find that annoying. What you want to do is you want to go to surface, surface, right now heading 90, pitch is 90, which is straight up, execute. Now SAS goes off and Smart ASS is acting like SAS. And I'm going to start turning and I'm just going to tell it, and I don't want the orbit information, I'm just going to tell it the pitch degree that I want. And what I want to make sure while I do this is to uh, keep within that prograde circle. But since I spend so much time bringing this up, I'm a little bit late in turning. So let's shade to the bottom of that circle. And I'll show you what some of the other smart ASS options are later on. Staging. Using smart ASS to make your launch more precise will undoubtedly help as far as the whole delta v, how much delta v you use to get to orbit. There are other ways and at some point I'll do an intro to KOS which will completely automate the thing but some of you will hate that so it's up to you which way you want. MechJeb is updated for 1.4 there is a version for it. Now you'll note we have to pay attention to our, pay attention to our time to wap waps. It's going down now, so I definitely don't want to pitch down any further. And I might have misjudged this. We'll see. No, it's going up now. Now that it's going up, I can pitch down more. Yeah, on this trajectory, I overdid it. We obviously are getting way too much drag. Uh oh, we lost communication. I really need to put some commsats up. Does that mean I can't throttle? Yeah, I can't throttle. So, fortunately we thrust limited this. And we can't change the thrust limiting when we have no communication. Downside is it might still overdo things. 
I don't know if SmartASS obeys the... No, it doesn't. So SmartASS does not obey the comnet right now. Now, in theory, we could have launched directly into the inclination of uh, Minmus. And if we had launched more like around here-ish, that time frame, we could have just made sure our inclination was the same from launch, similar to what I did with, uh, with Valentina's rescue. Interestingly, um, we're not at a bad location to transfer, right? We're approaching the descending node, which means that we can reach Minmus at the ascending node. So if we keep burning from here, it's more or less where I would have been burning anyway. So we've got that plus side. Minus side is we're not headed towards prograde, and I'm not going to take advantage of the fact that Smart ASS can override the comnet right now. Well, while we are waiting for communication, I am going to... Uh... Oh, there we go. We got communication. Okay. Cancel that. We have communication. I'm going to go... Actually, here, since we've finished launch, we don't want to care about the surface. Let's just go prograde. So that's what that is, prograde. So prograde, retrograde are the yellow markers, of course. Normal, anti-normal are the pinkish purple ones. Radial, anti-radial are the light blue ones. Okay, and what we want to pay attention to is whether we're going to actually get to Minmus. I'm not going to undo the thrust limiting, I think. No, I probably should. Um, we need to get on with it a little bit quicker. We didn't plot it out ahead of time. But you can see what's going on there. Not the best approach, but we didn't have much of a choice. So there we are. Minmus periapsis. If we focus on Minmus, we can see uh, we're coming in polar, which is good because we want to be able to hit a lot of biomes. And remember, uh, polar orbit is how you can hit a lot of biomes. So this is okay. And if we want, we can plot a little maneuver here to bring ourselves closer. If when you're entering an SOI you're too far away, remember the radial ones, the light blue ones are the ones to bring you closer and further away. And this brings up another function of MechJeb, which is the what the equivalent of another mod called precise node. And that is maneuver node editor. Maneuver node editor saves you from having to pull these little handlebars. These handlebars are annoying as all heck and what you can do is, you see this radial one? We can change it by 1 meter per second increments or 0.1 meter per second increments, which is really fine tuning it, but one, one should do the trick. And so we can, well, 10 kilometers is too close. Okay, I accidentally passed the node, it doesn't matter. We can have uh, MechJab turn to the node automatically, pressing node there. To some extent, this uh, surpasses the, the limitations of career mode as far as the probe SAS functions, so it's up to you whether you want to use all that. But it's more a matter of pilot convenience, and I never understood the whole limiting those functions on the probe core based on what probe core it is thing. I think this is the first time we're passing by Minmus in this series, so let's start first of all by pointing our solar panels to the sun, which is the other way. Okay, and then let's log pressure data and transmit. Log temperature data, transmit. I don't know why recovery for temperature data would be more important and would get extra science no idea let's wait for our electric charge to recover just a little bit and then we'll do a goo 6.3 science only unless you recover it but we'll take what we can get right now okay and then here at periapsis I'll just manually turn to the retrograde vector and we have captured and That's good enough. 31 by 27 orbit. Nice one hour and six minute orbital period. Polarish inclination of 98 degrees. And we have 639 meters per second of delta V left despite 
the issues on launch. Still high over Mimis here. So actually let's make sure... Unfortunately we've sort of uh, made a orbit that um, is right on the terminator between the daylight side and nighttime side. Well let's talk about inclination changes and um, and uh, ascending node and descending node changes. So if you do, if you wanted to do an inclination change right now and change it from 98 degrees, you do it at the equator here. And so that'll change your tilt like, whoa, like that. So now we're tilting differently with respect to the equator. But let's say we wanted to fix a situation where we seem to be stuck on the nighttime side of Minmus and that's not good for our solar panels. We do that at the poles. It's not quite the same as, uh, you're pulling the same handle as the inclination change, the uh, pinkish purple ones or magenta or whatever you want to call it but it's not a fact it won't change your inclination stated as it is right there what's changing is where your plane is and this was one of the problems that we had when rendezvousing with uh, Valentina it wasn't so much the inclination but really where the ascending and descending node were was the main question but yeah we're changing the longitude of ascending node is what we're changing and so the ascending node used to be at one longitude over here and now we're changing it at a different longitude over here and doing that we put a little bit of energy into our orbit so we also need to do go a little bit retrograde so it is wasting a bit of fuel but I would much rather land on the daylight side actually uh, considering where we're going in our orbit maybe we should have done it at the south pole because we're going to get there sooner. Let's do that. Note that I'm deliberately pointing the orbit in such a way that where we're landing on the daylight side will also have communication back to Kerbin. Don't forget that. So I saw that our communication lines were going this way and so that's why I tilted the orbit to here instead of like putting it over here instead which would not be good for communication with Kerbin. Okay. So now uh, let's try and land on these flat spots. Let's have an easy landing for starters and then we'll try and make a hop up to one of the other terrains. One goo container. Um, near Minmus, yes. Transmit. Okay, and transmit the temperature. 20 signs for the pressure scan. Okay, so landing primer. It's not that hard to land on Minmus, and it's certainly easier to land on Minmus than it is to land on the moon. Getting to Minmus is marginally trickier because of the inclination. We want to land in this location, so first of all, ahead of that location we should bring our orbit down, point prograde, change to surface velocity, and we want a sort of crashing indication around the edge of the biome that we want here. At this point it might be nice to add a few things to our custom windows. The time to impact and the suicide burn countdown. So suicide burn countdown is when you should light your engines pointing retrograde at full thrust if you want to avoid you know crashing. So you must light the engines at full thrust pointing retrograde by the time that countdown ends otherwise you will crash and die so that's what that is that's what it means this does not mean that if you light your engines ahead of that that you will not die this is these are two different things people miss that um, it's just a guarantee that you will die if you don't do it by that time. It's not a guarantee that you'll survive if you do do it in that time. Part of the reason for that is your horizontal speed. The suicide burn countdown is more interested in your vertical speed. And so the horizontal speed can throw it off. Also the curvature of the planet, depending on how it's calculating it, could throw it off. Well, I want to cut it down. We were only on the edge of the biome, right? So let's get to the center of the biome here. 
and this will help because it's cutting down our horizontal speed so the suicide burn countdown is more accurate now let's double check that thrust limiting changes that ah see that's an important piece of information note that it doesn't know about my thrust limiting and so the suicide burn countdown is assuming 100% thrust here but I've thrust limited and I'm gonna thrust limit to 10% Maybe that's too short a time, uh, too long a time, too long a time, because it's inefficient to have long, long landing burns. So we'll set it to 20%. And just point retrograde at this point. As soon as you have a landing spot you're satisfied with, you can just point retrograde. And wait. It is advisable to kill the horizontal speed at a certain point to make sure you're just landing vertical otherwise you risk landing on like one edge or tipping over any residual horizontal speed can lead you to tip over that's not as much of a problem Minmus again because it has such low gravity but on the moon it's gonna be a pain so well uh, if I wanted to kill all the horizontal speed right now I'll just tilt a little bit below that retrograde vector and push that vector towards the top And it's actually crossed on the other side, so I'm going to push it, push. And now our surface horizontal speed is less than one meter per second. You can see we can kill our speed pretty darn quickly without full throttle here. And that's one reason why we want smaller engines for this. We've already thrust limited and everything. And it's still sort of OP. Okay, we're down. A little bit more cautiously than I strictly needed to be, but observe Mystery Goo. 12.6 science for non-recovery. Recovery would get us 30. Let's get this first. Okay, and the thermometer. 16.8 science. And barometer. 25.2 science. Okay, let's allow us to recharge and why don't we hop up to here? Let me verify which of the flats we were on. Which one was it? it says greater flats for this one. So there are other flats. Um, so if we hopped over to this flat here, that would be a totally different biome. What I want to do is not go for another flat. I want to maybe maybe heading over here and maybe trying to reach that one eventually would be good. So maybe if we land on this plateau here and then land over there, that would be a good idea. So roughly speaking, this direction is northwest. And so we're looking at a compass heading of 310 or so would be a good idea to go there. And then with 248 meters per second, maybe we have enough to hop over to that biome as well, that flat area. All right, so let's do that. Let's go up and over, we said 310. Our camera is okay. And we should do this from the map here. Close to Minmus, we have these time warp restrictions, though. I don't know if we're going to get over that hill. Since the time warp restriction is at 3 kilometers, I suppose that's as tall as that's going to be, right? Logic. I put too much surface velocity in. Well, time for the art of lithobraking. Let's see if it will work out for us. <laughs> I doubt it. Um, so, uh, in fact, we're still passing right by this, so this is not good. We are going to crash. This was a badly judged hop. But this is Kerbal Space Program, and you never entirely know whether it's dead or not until it's dead. So there's that going for us. But probably at these velocities, it's just gonna go poof and die. Oh no, it didn't, it didn't. Uh, lift for break, please. 
<laughs> uh, oh, 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 no. It, it slowed down. It slowed down. Oh, man. Oh, come on. Uh, no, the other way, the other way, because the nose cone is ablative. Oh, shoot. I don't have communication. I don't have communication anyways. Oh, well. So, lithal breaking... We, we might have to... I might have to get more practice with before doing a tutorial on as far as really the art of I've I've done it once well on Moho if I recall, or the, there were there were some locations where I managed to have an intact probe after you know impacting the ground at high velocity, but yeah, there's an art to it, I assure you. Anyway, uh, I think that'll do it for me this time. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. And I'll see you next time.